Saint Rohit made his own dynasty. In doing so, he joined the big name of warm blood dressage breeding, Rubinstein, Weltmeyer, Florestan. At the Tokyo Olympic game alone, he sired a record eight offspring in the dressage arena. And while he is now mostly found in the third and fourth generation of today's horses, he remained mentioned and discussed in breeding circles. Let's take a look at how this jumping bred stallion came to have such an influence on dressage breeding. The story of the sire line starts with Sandro, bred in Holstein, and by the popular thoroughbred stallion Sacramento Song, who was licensed in Holstein to bring in some thoroughbred blood. Sandro himself was almost 70% thoroughbred blood. He was a refined, elegant jumper that competed at a meter 60 and also in eventing. He was to become influential in both jumping and dressage horses in the next few generations. We find him in the pedigree of Sandro Boy, Sachmo, and Shutterfly, for example. Although at first rejected by Holstein that did not approve him after his poor performance test, he went to Denmark, and eventually he returned to Germany in the stable of Paul Schockemolle. Throughout his time at stud, he sired around 700 offspring or so, and he seemed to have been a particularly good match for mares by Gepard, who was by Gothard, probably because these lines were on the heavier side and he was seen as a refining sire. Okay, let's take a moment to talk about refining. What does that even mean? Well, it's all about the physical trait. Refining in breeding means moving through selective breeding from a thicker, heavier phenotype. Think um, heavy muscling, thick neck, heavy bone, toward a, a finer one. Leggier, less muscle mass, lighter head and neck connection. The idea being that a lighter horse are, well, well, it's lighter on its feet, and they're more agile, they have more endurance, and they're generally able to jump and move with more athleticism. So when you have a mare that is on the heavier side, you might choose a stallion that is more finely built in hope to get an offspring that is somewhere in the middle, and that is where the thoroughbred has been used so many times in warm blood breeding history. Every few generations, it seems, some lines tend to get a bit heavier, and so, as we will see, there are breeding decisions that are made to correct this tendency. In the 1970s and into the 1990s, the thoroughbred and the trachaner were the stallion of choice to achieve this. They refined the line that were trending to her heavier side, and that's why you see them sprinkled in a lot of warm blood pedigree. We recognize the thoroughbred because we put the, the registry put a double X after their name. We will get back to this idea of refining a little bit later on, and we will see how Sandro Hit fits in this pattern. So back to the sire line. So one of those crosses of Sandro on a Gothard lined mare was Sandro Song. He was a big, impressive, 17-hand, dual-talented stallion. But of course, back then, it was expected of all breeding stallion to be able to excel in both dressage and jumping. The stallion tests back then were grueling. A hundred days of training and evaluation in dressage, over fence, and over cross-country jumps. Stallion were evaluated, of course, on their abilities, but also on their temperament and their trainability. Sandro Song finished in first position as at Oldenburg licensing, and he did quite well at the performance test. He had tons of scope and a good mind for dressage. He had a moderately successful career at stud, breeding consistently, if not really high number, from the early 1990s all the way into the 2010s. He ended up producing 11 licensed sun and a small amount of meter 40 and above jumpers from the around 600 offspring that I could find. No one could predict at this point that a colt he sired out of a Ramino daughter would become so famous. Just a quick thank you to my Patreon member, as well as my channel members that make video like this possible. Thank you so much for your support. I will, if you would like to join them, the link is down in the description, and the join button is down here somewhere. So the mare in question, Loretta, was a daughter of Ramino, a jumping sire, who himself was by the great Ramiro, a top jumper and a top jumper sire. More jumping lines in here. But she was a very good mover, and so she was bred to dressage stallions, first to Karen, the trachaner, and then to Rubenstein. And finally, her third foal, she was bred to Sandro Song. This colt, born in 1993, was Sandro Hit. And he was a striking colt with very good movement. He was so good that she was put back in foal to Sandro Song and delivered a filly the following year, a full sister to Sandro Hit named Traviata. 
Loretta went on to produce two more licensed stallion, Diamond Hit by Don Shufro and Royal Hit, who was exported to Australia by Royal Dance. But her first exceptional colt was Sandro Hit. He was clearly of stallion quality, and so he was prepared for the licensing and the stallion test, where they discovered that he couldn't jump. All those jumping gene, and he showed good form over fence, but no scope. For most, that would have been a trip, the end of it, and a trip to, you know, a gelding operation. But he moved so well that someone thought they could turn him toward dressage. This someone was Ulf Muller. At the time, a veterinarian turned horse rider and trainer, and the manager for the dressage section of the Ulrich Castleman's sale and training barn, and he clearly took a liking to the Black Stallion. He eventually piloted him to the Bunde Championat as a six-year-old. The following was written in a Euro Dressage article. Sandro Hit, a gorgeous black Oldenburg stallion by Sandro Song. Not only did the black show three excellent basic gates, but throughout his test he remained in pure suspension, showed power, print, expression, quality, potential, you name it. If everything goes well, this horse, he can be the next Olympic champion within five years. Sandro Hit received 9.7 score, which made him the highlight of the day. He made such an impression on the crowd and on the judges that he was not only crowned the six-year-old champion, but the demand for him at stud exploded. Now, that is not unlike a lot of young stallions coming out on scene, even today, the flavor of the year, some people say. And at the time, if Paul Schacamole had followed his normal pattern, he would have probably sold the stallion, as he was at the peak of his potential and gathering a lot of interest. In fact, here's another excerpt from Euro Dressage, dated from May 1999. Negotiation about the sale of Sandro Hit to the United States were already started before the championship even began. Moller will be riding Sandro Hit until after the Bunde Championnat, but then Europe is probably destined to see the best young dressage horse leave the continent to start a new career in the US. Obviously, this did not happen. Something changed and Paul Schacamole decided to keep Sandro Hit. And the rest is history. Under the pressure for stud duty, Sandro Hit never competed again after the Bunde Championnat. But he went on to sire over 4,000 offspring. He was the number one sire of dressage horse at the World Breeding Federation top sire list in 2021. But why? Sandra Hitt, as you heard me, clearly captivated by his quality. That made him a very desirable as a young stallion sire, but what made him remain popular over his years of stud was what he produced. A look at his Anovarian breeding value for confirmation show that they are all positive, some of them more than others, yes, and in the movement department, he's also clearly able to improve the quality of the gait in his offspring. What Breeder discovered with his first few foal crop was that he was an amazing stamping stallion. Physically, he could be bred to all type of mares and his type would come across in his folds. He produced uphill horses, long-legged and with great movement. They had this looseness and swing in their gait that was visible very early on and was very much prized. His foals were beautiful from day one. They were also all dark, since he is homozygous for the black gene, meaning that he can only produce either black or bay horses. Surprisingly, I found out that although he really looks black, he must carry one agouti gene, making him technically a very dark bay. In other words, it became clear that if you bred your mare to Sandra Hit, you knew what you would get. You would have a very good idea of what the foals would look like and how they would move. And in a business like breeding, where it can be so unpredictable, this freak of nature that seemed to stamp everything was as close as you could get to a sure thing. The other thing that was guaranteed was his fertility. Frozen or fresh, his semen was always good. Sometimes breeders would turn to him when their first choice of stallion was just not getting their mare pregnant. Like any stallion, he could not pull miracle, but when bred to good mares, he produced some very, very nice horses. If one could fault him was that he did not pass on a lot of bone. His offspring would be on the lighter side, a smaller frame. But on the other hand, it made him an excellent choice for those looking to refine heavier mares. And here we come back to what I had explained earlier, the need every few generations to have the influence of a refining stallion. For the first time, breeders could do this without reaching for a thoroughbred or a trochaner, and instead they used Sandro Hit. 
For example, he was put to the daughter of Donnerhall quite a bit since they tended to be on the heavier side, and this proved to be one of the many nicks that he had. One of his most popular and prolific son, Sir Donna Hall, was one of them. He was also an outcross for the most popular dressage lines of the day that were starting to get a little bit inbred. Since he came from jumping lines, he had no close connection to mares carrying Veltmeyer, Rubinstein, Donner Hall, Brentano, and so he was a breath of new blood without compromising movement, elegance, or power. So in the end, he has a 196 licensed son, 42 in Hanover alone. Interestingly, only four are approved for the, four, for the Dutch warm blood. He was not as popular with Dutch breeder as he was with the German ones. However, with the number of offspring he produced, people started to complain that his offspring were actually not reaching the top of the sport in the number that would reflect how many foals he had sire. Now, that's always something that's very difficult to judge. So few horses are able to have the opportunity uh, and the skill to reach the top. Still, we expect that such a prolific stallion would have had more. And so the opinion and the comment and the scuttlebutt started to grow that something was perhaps not ideal if you were looking for a top dressage horse from him. First was his walk. His walk was not bad at all, but he didn't pass it on reliably. And a good walk for dressage breeder is a bit of a sacred cow. You must have a good walk. Okay, so he needed to be bred with mares with a good swinging, rhythmic, and correct walk. Second, Stum started to observe that they thought he produced horses that moved a bit out behind, meaning it could be hard for them to bring their hindquarters under themselves and get more of a carrying power, although this was not visible in his breeding statistics. Still, people started accusing him of making flashy trot but not enough sit. Then finally it became his temperament. People started, they kept referring to the fact that he'd been a difficult animal to train and ride, and perhaps he passed that on. You see, some people think Sandro hits are hot. In fact, people that know his offspring would generally disagree. They're often perceived as lazy and resistant to harder work. Others claim that nothing could be further from the truth and that they have ridden amazing performer by Sandro Hit. Perhaps the difference lies somewhere in, you know, the mare line and also what people are asking of these horses and how they're training them. I can share one anecdote from attending a clinic given by Ulf Muller himself. This was a clinic for young horses and their rider, and one of my horse was attending because she had just under three months under saddle. At this clinic, Herr Muller scolded another rider for not having gloves, whips, and spurs. He explained to the audience that the rider was entering a battle without its tool and its weapon. A battle. So this gives you an idea of the more confrontational approach, not of Ulf himself necessarily, but of the system of the day. Now, to be fair, he did work at Castleman, and I think you need a certain method, a certain system, when you're training 10 to 15 young warm bloods per day, most of them of top caliber, and aim for the sale to really ambitious riders. So this system is aimed at producing top riding horses, and it's a system that works for maybe 80 to maybe 90% of horses. So is it possible that this system, however, was not really well adapted to some of Sandro Hitt's style of temperament that his offspring got? Because temperament and rideability, this is a delicate and multifactorial thing. Maybe what we should say is that of all the things that Sandro Hitt passes on reliably, Perhaps his rideability and his desire to work is not one of them. Also, in his own words, when asked by people why they thought that maybe Sandro Hid could sometime pass on difficult temperament, Ulf Muller himself explained. He can make proud horses. This is what is important. But it also gives a responsibility to the rider that they understand this, this proudness. And don't try to press this proudness out. The rider must allow the pride to come out of the horse. Maybe it was a bit the same with him at the stallion test. They pressed him, and I let him live. Okay, perhaps proud, maybe a bit lazy, maybe not completely comfortable in the more close collected work of the higher level, but, but clearly something in the package was not quite producing upper level horses. He produced beautiful horses with very nice movement. They actually have a very cute jump, and I know quite a few that made lovely hunters, low-level jumper, and even eventers. But 
I'm not a trainer, so I'm going to leave that here. I have, however, bred two Sandra hit foals. One of them out of a very proud and, I dare say, difficult mare. I chose him for her because she needed longer lines, better movement, more suspension, and a little bit more angulation. She was from absolute pure jumping line, and this was to be her first dressage bred foal, but I knew that if it didn't turn out to be a dressage foal, I still had the jump to come back to. But... The foal went on to be extremely trainable. He competed up to pre-St. George, and he could have kept on going. But the cost of maintaining a horse in training is not negligible, however, and reality set in for his owner. He pivoted to a career as an inventor, taking on training for this particularly really new job for him with his typical really good nature. He's doing very well. The other filly I bred was out of a Donner Hall granddaughter. You know, that Nick everybody talks about. This mare was short-legged and had a tendency to really produce carbon copies of herself. I bred her to Sandra Hit and hoped to break the mold, so to speak, and to get the legginess and the better movement that he so consistently passes on. I was not worried at all about the temperament, because this mare's foal have all had amazing trainability, probably coming from the Donner Hall and the Rubinero lines that she carries. This filly will be started under saddle in the next year or so, so we will see. Sandra Hit now is mostly appreciated in the third generation. Breeders really like having broodmares by him because they seem to pass on his best quality and yet they let more modern, more sport-like horse stallion come through. He will forever now be known as the most prolific and influential sire of the S line today. If you want to know more about stallions, I do some of these deep dive. You can find all of them in this playlist here. Thank you.